Guys, welcome back to the Technology Channel. I'm Ryan Knows Tech here with our tech blog, techinform.us. And it's been a very long time since, since I've made a video, and I apologize for that. But, you know, wrapping up your senior year, there's a lot of stuff that needs to get done. And that's what I've been working on. Anyhow, today we're going to be here with a review of Sparrow, a mail client for Mac OS X, as well as iOS. I don't know if they've gone over to the Windows side yet, but um, it's a awesome mail application. It's a couple dollars and it's definitely worth it. If you would use multiple mail accounts, you want a really streamlined, clean, easy to use uh, user interface versus the stock mail client that comes with OS X, just known as mail. If I open this up here, it's a little clunky. Relating it to web browsers, it feels a little bit more like Firefox. Yes, it's powerful, but it feels almost too powerful in the way it's not refined enough. And that's rare. Uh, coming from an Apple product. It's good, but I just don't like it in comparison to Sparrow. Used it quite a bit. I used it for well over two years since I've had a Mac now. And um, switching to Sparrow one, two, three months ago uh, was definitely worthwhile. So this is what this looks like. We all know we have to expand our inboxes over here and we can see everything. Um, it is a powerful mail client. It just feels clunky, as I said before. If I go ahead down here in the bottom, we open up Sparrow. It's got a nice little icon down there. And it looks about the same, aside from the fact it's just a little easier on the eyes. So there's a little bit less here. Uh, and I really don't think we're losing a lot of features or functionality, at least not stuff that I would ever use. So we have a unified inbox here. I've got, looks like, uh, six different mail um, accounts set up with this right now. And I've, I've only got three new emails, which is rare for me. But here they are. We click on them. We get the little um, preview over there. I'll go ahead and put this in full screen so you can get a better idea of what this looks like. Uh, notice on the top right, there is an option to go into full screen mode, uh, which could be nice if you want to sit down and focus all your attention on doing email, which personally sounds boring, but uh, could definitely be done. So we've got these emails over here. We have a couple uh, options up at the top. That one right there is just to compose a new email, which is really straightforward. It comes up in its own message here. We've got plenty of text formatting, hyperlinks, all the stuff you would expect, ability to save the drafts, and of course, add attachments. Uh, next button over is going to be your reply forward option um, right there. Then we can archive and delete there with the trash can. Right hand clicking gives us more more options here. We can of course get to those reply, reply all, and forward options as well as mark as unread, starred, or spam. And then move it to one of the folders um, in that email account that it came from. If you got an email from a Yahoo account, you cannot move it to a Gmail account in a folder as you could with say iOS Mail, the stock mail app in iOS. And for some people that may be an issue, however, I like to keep emails in the accounts which they came to. If that weren't the case, I would set up a forwarding feature, not try to move them across the board and into different accounts. Uh, but it's pretty simple here. If we were to double click on one, it'll come up in its own window if you wanted to deal with it like that. And when it's in its own window, or quite frankly over here when it's in the preview, we've got our date and time stamps up there. We can click to uh, look at, I think it's called threaded mail. We have our I option here to see all the specifics of where it came from, to who, what it was called, and the date and everything. Then there's the options that we saw before. We can actually view the source, print it right from here, and then there's a move to button up there to move it to those folders again. Now, uh, here's something I actually didn't know when I first got the application. I can go ahead and drag this out over here as far as I want to get a better idea of my inbox, different folders in that unified inbox. There's my sent. Or I could come down into individual accounts here and look at individual folders within that specific account. Uh, and of course, I could drag stuff over into these folders wherever I wanted to. And that's going to be true with all of the uh, different mail accounts that you enroll. Up in the top here, we've got some preferences. We'll take a quick look at it. I'm not going to talk about every feature that's here. I just wanted to make a quick review so you could see what it is and maybe it's right for you. Uh, we've got some general options. You could pause and read through this if you'd like. Accounts, this is where we just add in our different accounts and turn on notifications. If you do get an email, it's kind of like growl notifications. In the top right, you get a little notification of a little bit of a preview of the message, who it was from, time, uh, which account it went to, stuff like that. Of course, there's a signature option. There's some organization options you can turn on or off. Uh, basic folders like bulk mail and archive if you want to see those or not. Uh, advanced, go ahead and pause if you want to read any of this stuff. Uh, we can hide pictures, always reply to all, stuff like that. We can actually integrate this or connect this with our Facebook if that's for you. Personally, I'd rather keep them separate. And then they also have um, some pick your, your cloud attachment service. You can actually use Cloud App, which I have experience with, or Dropbox if you're a Dropbox fan. So those are the options with that. I've used it for quite uh, quite a long time and there's one complaint that I do have with it 
And it's actually not with the app. It is with a service that the application uses on MacBook Pros that can switch between graphics card. I have a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Right now I'm using the discrete AMD card. I could switch to the integrated card. And if I were to do that, it uses a I think it's a system or a program called Quartz. If I were to do that, I would have to kill Sparrow and then restart it to get those graphics to load up again. Same word, same word to same would be if I went from integrated to discrete. Kind of like the Twitter app. If you're familiar with Twitter and you switch graphics, uh, it just freezes. It's a gray box. You have to quit it and start it up again every time you switch graphics. If you don't do that very often, it won't be a big pain, and it certainly does not take long to start up. So Sparrow is a very uh, effective, efficient, lightweight mail application that I do highly recommend. We can see right here that the application is in the Mac App Store. It is $10, which does seem like a little bit much, but it is a very, very, very well put together application. Uh, I'm sure you can find it elsewhere online, but I would recommend buying it, as I said a few minutes ago. They've got some screenshots. Take a look at the reviews. It's got 303. It's a 4.5 star. I would easily give it five. It's great. It's a great tool. What else can you say about it? Sparrow. Highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. Find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash James R. Schultz. Our website is techinform.us. We've put up quite a few uh, new posts recently. We've been, we've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes again. We're trying to get back into it, uh, but with time, that is our big issue here. Uh, so please check that out and subscribe if you liked what you saw here today. And I'll try to talk to you later this week in a future video. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.